I think I speak for all Americans when I say my reaction to Trevor Noah being picked as the new host of The Daily Show was, who? The South African comedian doesn't have much of a profile here in this country after a grand total of three appearances on Jon Stewart's program where he has taken some swipes at America. Not a single head of state went to Nigeria after the January attacks. Not even Obama. And he's African. Well, 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 he's uh, African-American. He was not born in Africa, born in Hawaii. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> But now Noah's being smacked around for a series of insensitive jokes he posted on Twitter, especially those denigrating Jews, women, and yes, African Americans. Check it out. Almost bumped a Jewish kid crossing the road. He didn't look before crossing, but I still would have felt so bad in my German car. Oh yeah, the weekend people are going to get drunk and think that I'm sexy. Fat chicks everywhere. Noah defended himself with this tweet, to reduce my views to a handful of jokes that didn't land is not a true reflection of my character nor my evolution as a comedian. I spoke earlier with Greg Gutfeld, co-host of The Five and author of The Joy of Hate, How to Triumph Over Whiners in the Age of Phony Outrage. Greg Gutfeld, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. As an aspiring comedian, Greg, do you have some sympathy for a comic who suddenly uh, under fire for offending this group or that group based on jokes from years past? Uh, well, first, I have to correct you. I'm neither a comedian or uh, an aspiring comedian. I, uh, I take offense to that. A comedian you actually... One on TV. No, a comedian actually gets up on stage and tells jokes. I don't do that. So do you think the outrage about these jokes is a little over the top? It always is. It's always over the top. The interesting thing about it is the left had assumed that the people that were going to get angry about his jokes or his tweets would be from the right. However, it's the left that were most outraged over what they perceived to be sexist jokes and racist jokes. Um, would they miss the fact that they are actual jokes. But it also, it raises two disturbing elements about Twitter. One, it's a great place for manufactured outrage. It's a place to go if you're bored and you want to get angry about something. And then, then that you've anger- been drinking. Yeah, exactly. I think that was directed at me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, it only lasts 48 hours. You get, people get really, really angry. They demand a scalp of contrition and then they move on to somebody else. And Howie, it's gonna happen to you it's happened to me. It happens to everybody. And that's why we got to say enough. We have to declare a truce on phony manufactured outrage. I wrote a book on it called Joy of Hate a couple of years ago. I thought it was reaching its peak back then. Now it's actually worse. The cycle is now accelerating right. so but, that it's almost every two to three days there is a new outrage. But, and the, but, and the but this, is now, this is now broader than Twitter, I would say. And look, I give comedians a lot of leeway because every, all comedy is going to offend somebody. But just to read you one of the tweets, uh, uh, Trevor Noah retweeted somebody who said, blue-eyed people have a higher alcohol tolerance, and he wrote, and lower Jew tolerance. Some of this just kind of smells like anti-Semitism, and that made oh, me wait. uncomfortable. Oh, no, you know what? Uh, that, I don't even think that's the worst one. Uh, these are, uh, yeah, they're not, they're not just uh, unfunny. They're, you know, it, they're kind of mean. But again, I go back to the fact that I have to give everybody a pass if it's a joke. I have to give them a pass even if it's a bad joke. The, it, this is the other disturbing thing about Twitter. Him on Twitter, Trevor on Twitter, is not likable. I mean, when you read those tweets, it's like, who is this guy? Then you go and you watch his, his uh, actual performances, and he's incredibly likable. He's very funny. He's a funny guy, and he makes fun of everybody. But there is how he, a, a weird thing in his tweets that's a little disturbing that's focused on Jews. It's just there. and it's, Well, it's, on Jews, on fat women and that kind of thing. But here's one more point, Greg, and that is, let me read you another one. Uh, when yeah. flying all over the middle of America, the turbulence is so bad, it's like all the ignorance is rising through the air. Now, here's a guy who's from South Africa. He's an outsider. Uh, right. Risky to be kind of taking all these shots at U.S. of A.? Oh, I don't care if you're an outsider. I mean, I... I moved to London to edit Maxim and I was making, you know, I, I, I did that for a living. However, the problem with that joke isn't that he's from South Africa. It's because it's so predictable. Yeah. It was like he was checking off uh, the litmus, you know, box of what makes an accessible or successful comedian on Comedy Central uh, make the assumption that Americans are uh, ignorant racists uh, and basically make jokes about, uh, about Israel. 
because he does that into it. Right. Those are acceptable in the liberal intelligentsia, the right. people that watch The Daily Show. Let me, so let me, he gets, let me sneak in a last question, which is, sure. you know, Trevor Noah has put out a sort of a defensive statement, Comedy Central the same. Shouldn't this guy, I mean, this is his in introduction to America, come out, do a couple of big TV interviews, try to diffuse this thing with a little humor? Shouldn't he put on his big boy pants and face the music? I don't know. You know what? Here's the, here's the irony of this, Howie. I am defending this guy because he made some really bad jokes. When he's in his new job, I doubt he will ever return the favor to me because I work at Fox News. The moment I screw up or I say something that can, that can be taken out of context, he's going to step on my drowning head. So I like to think that I'm doing the nice thing by saying, hey, give this guy a break. He's young. Uh, he's made some stupid tweets. By the way, Twitter is really dumb. You're not even being paid for it. I do it. I come home after work. I have three glasses of wine. I get on Twitter. The next day I wake up and I go, what did I do? <laughs> All right, so what did I you're do? You're defending and then I, his right to skewer you in the future. Got to go. Yeah, I'm defending his defending his right to condemn me. <laughs>